Uh, hi everyone, uh, DJM67 here. A um, bit of an interesting one. As I was coming home from work today, up near the um, up near the road at the front gate there, there was a few people that were sort of standing around panicking. They'd pulled their cars over and everything, and there was a snake on the on the side of the road. So um, as you do, um, I ran over and had a look at it. Um, could see that it was what we call a, a keelback snake here, um, and grabbed it, I thought oh, I'll, I'll show it to the kids when they get home and that sort of stuff and uh, potentially put something up on YouTube. Now uh, this is a, this snake is wild, it's not a um, hand raised snake so there is actually a chance that I'm going to get bitten here but um, the good thing about these, these particular snakes um, is that they're non-venomous. They are a, a type of colubrid which are the, the back fang snakes so they're not the, the front fanged or the um, the vipers with the swinging fangs that go like that, but uh, I thought I'd give you a look. So I'll just have to get it out of the, the little esky here. Um, come on. He's resisting a little bit. But these are, these are beautiful little snakes. And I'll show you this one. Now, here we go. Now this I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but um, yeah. Well, you see his little tongue going off. Oh, he's sniffing me. He's probably going to bite me here. Uh, he's checking out my hand. No, he's not going to bite me. So you're going to be a good YouTube snake. All right. Um, so these snakes, the keelback snake, they're one of the few colubrids we have in Australia. Most of our snakes are um, a lapids, which are the the front fang snakes, um, but they're the solid, uh, the the fixed front fang snakes. Not the. Um, I'll see if I can get him to have a look there. I'll, I'll try and keep his head in the shot. Um, but these are Tropodonophis uh, meri. They used to be. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Stripperinkus, I think it is, um, is what their name used to be, but uh, it got changed a while ago. I'm not sure why. But um, the, uh, these these snakes are very interesting in particular. It's okay. It's okay. These snakes are very interesting um, for a number of reasons. One is, um, well, apart from being a colubrid, which is um, very different to the normal stuff that we get around here, we've got some very venomous snakes here which unfortunately is one of the reasons why a lot of these ones get, get killed in particular. But they've got beautiful pattern coloration and they're one of the few snakes if you... I don't know if you can see that or not, but each of the scales is sort of ridged. It's not a smooth scale. Most of our um, Australian snakes have um, smooth scales on them. But it's a, a beautiful coloured pattern pattern here. I'll go have a look there. Very, very lovely little snake. Um, but so, uh, so some of the ways that you can identify this snake in particular, being a colubrid, um, and you probably can't pick it up very well there, so I'll have to um, find a JPEG or something that, that actually shows it. They've got um, they got what's called a L'Oreal scale uh, between their their um, oh, what do you call them? I can't remember what the name of the the ones near their eyes is. Wee, it's doing a bit of a, wee. but um, yeah, they got a L'Oreal scale between the, the scales that are just around their eyes and the one that's at the at the front of their front of their face. I'll, I'll find out for you what it is. I, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But uh, apart from that, that's one of the major ways to identify this snake and separate it from some of the more venomous ones. But once you, wee, once you get a bit. Um, a bit closer to them, you can actually start to do some scale counts, which is the the real way to to identify the different snake species. And uh, uh, wee. across the across the mid body scale, oh, hang on, I'll move it down so you can. Wee. Where are you going? Oh, it's starting to flatten out a little bit, which means it's getting a bit peed off. But across, if you count the scales across the top, these are the your ventral scales at mid body. You these ones always have a, a count of 15. I think there were some reports of some having a scale count of about 17, uh, but the majority of them are about 15. Your um, ventral scale count from the, the, 
the head down towards the tail is usually about 130 to 160, maybe maybe up to 165 in some of the larger specimens. This one's a typical size. Um, they gr do grow a little bit larger than this one, but um, hey, there we go. <laughs> uh, now on the bottom here, say where, where you got your caudal scales and your subcaudal scales. One of the things I'll see if you can pick it up. Hang on. The subcaudal scales, which are just here below that, there's the anal plate there. You notice that that's that's actually a divided anal plate, and then you've got the subcaudal scales here. They're all divided as well. That's one of the key ways to. Um, oh, looks like you might be going to do a poo or something. But that's one of the key ways you can separate this one. That looks very very similar um, in a lot of respects to uh, one of our venomous snakes, being the uh, rough scaled snake which you also get around these parts, um, which is a very aggressive snake, and you wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Um, it probably would have bitten me by about 15 times by now. Um, but that one has um, all single scales down the back. That's the Tropodecus um, genus. And another thing, I don't know if you can pick this up, you can see around the mouth it's got these little black flecks. Come on, matey. On, on the lip. Uh, the uh, rough scaled snake doesn't have that, but um, just uh, if you see a snake like this, obviously don't pick it up unless you, unless you you've um, had an opportunity to to meet a, a reasonable number of snakes in the the general area uh, because it does look a lot like some of the venomous snakes. It also looks like uh, one of the smaller uh, a smaller like a juvenile taipan, um, which we also get in this area. Um, the the taipans are, are very deadly. They're actually the mainland taipan is the third most toxic um, snake in the world. And the the way they work that out, uh, I guess um, they've got to have some some way to measure it. But they use um, a toxicity measurement called LD50, which means basically a lethal dose in uh, mice. Fifty percent of a, a sample of mice in the 18 to 21 gram range and the um, I mean to give you give you an idea the inland taipan which is basically the most toxic land snake in the world which we don't get here but they get it a little bit further inland um, it has a an LD50 of um, 0 0.025 milligrams per kilogram of mice so basically um, the average size bite um, of one of those will have a 50% chance of killing a rodent that weighs around about half a ton. So it's it's quite quite toxic by by those standards. And to say to compare it to something like the um, the eastern diamondback rattlesnake, which has um, an LD50 of around about I think it's about 11.3, 11.4 milligrams. So that's around about 450, really, about 450 times. Um, more toxic than than what your eastern diamondback rattlesnake is, but that's not this one. Uh, they're often killed because, for some reason, people call them a swamp tiger. You can see it's sort of got got a stripy pattern. But the, the really good thing about these snakes is, in Australia, um, someone made a really stupid decision at some point to introduce um, Bufo marinus, the the cane toad, which is a toxic cane toad, and it it didn't eat any of the beetles off the cane that they. Um, they wanted it to, but um, what it did do was eat everything else, and so it, it has had a devastating effect on the wildlife in Australia, and it's moving its way into Kakadu now, which is really bad. But um, basically, any predators that that eat it um, pretty much die from the bufo toxin. It's um, it, it's fatal and it's extremely rapid. But this little snake here, the keelback snake, is actually um, it, it's it's a starting to evolve a, a response or a, um, an immune uh, immunity to, to the bufo toxin. And initially there were reports that it could, it could start to eat the tadpoles of the, um, the, the cane toads, which that's the, primarily what these do. They, they um, eat frogs and tadpoles. They will eat small, uh, small lizards and fish as well. But um, a, a couple of things that this snake does which is unusual. One is, you, you probably notice that most snakes actually eat, eat their prey head first. 
this one eats them tail first and that is probably one of the reasons why it's given it a bit of a chance to build up some immunity um, and it's now beginning to evolve um, the ability to eat larger and larger cane toads. They still have trouble eating the, the, the full-size cane toad, but uh, definitely juvenile cane toads, and the keelbacks are, are making a real comeback. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that, and luckily I haven't been bitten. All right, ta!